I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We've been looking at the plagues that have been sent upon Egypt because Pharaoh refuses to obey God. We've been reminded of the simple truth that sin affects more than us. Here it is, Pharaoh that is singing against God, but not only him, but his family and the whole nation of Egypt is suffering as a result of Pharaoh's disobedience, of Pharaoh's rebellion against God. And that's something that we all can learn from uh, as we go through these uh, ver these verses in the Word of God, that sin affects more than us. That it's like a ripple in a pond when you throw a stone in, that it reaches even further many times than we could expect. Somebody has said, sin will take you further than you want to go. It will cost you more than you want to stay pay and it will keep you longer than you will want to stay. And it's important for us to remember that. Somebody has also said one time that sin would not be nearly as appealing to us if the cost of sin was paid in advance. Many times we don't see the cost of sin. Satan shows us the glory of the moment, but he does not show us the cost that comes with that, the last much longer, sometimes even for a lifetime. So in Exodus chapter 9, verse 1, it says, Then the Lord said unto Moses, Going unto Pharaoh, and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. But if thou refuse to let them go, and will hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, and upon the asses, and upon the camels, and upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous meringue. So you can see that this meringue is coming on all of these animals. And he says, And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of the Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is in the children of the, that is the children of Israel. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did the thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died, but of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. And Pharaoh sang, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of Israelites did, and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. So yesterday we looked at the demand of God, let my people go, and the purpose behind that demand, that they may serve me. And we've mentioned the simple truth in the word of God that we see that salvation always has a future purpose. God did not save you to simply sit, soak, and sour, and... Uh, in a, in a church seat somewhere. God has saved you to serve him. He just didn't save you to take you to heaven when you die. God's got a future purpose for you now that was there at the moment that he saved you. Let my people go that they may serve me. And then we saw that the refusal to do this by Pharaoh would result in a plague. It says in verses 2 and 3, For if thou refuse to let them go, and will hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, and upon the asses, and upon the camels, and upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous meringue. So God tells him here, he said, listen, if you refuse to let them go, in other words, Pharaoh, if you live your life in rebellion to God, there are going to be consequences. Pharaoh, if you choose to disobey God, there are going to be consequences. And friend, that is a lesson that you and I need to learn as well. And the earlier that we learn that in life, the better off we are. The simple truth of the matter is, when we live in rebellion to God, there's consequences. When we choose to disobey him, there are consequences. When we decide that we're going to go our own way, there are consequences. And we must remember that in our lives. And then he says, Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous moraine. Friend, one of the things that you should learn as you go through the pages of the Word of God is very simply this. You do not want the hand of the Lord against you. And friend, let me remind you, it's not a matter of, of us trying to get the Lord on our side. No, no, remember in Joshua, when the angel of the Lord appears to Joshua and they're going to battle and he says, listen, are you for us or against us? And he says, listen, buddy, I'm not here to take sides. I'm here to take over. And we need to make sure that we're not in the business of trying to get God on our side. We need to make sure that we are on God's side. And there's a huge difference in that. 
But the hand of the Lord is against Pharaoh if he will not obey. And it's going to be revealed in that it's against his cattle. It's actually against all of the animals that belong in the, to Egypt, as you can see in verse 3. And he says, there shall be a very grievous moraine. Th that word moraine simply means a pestilence or a plague. There's going to be a very uh, grievous plague, uh, a great, very grievous pestilence that is going to come on the animals of Israel because of the decisions of Pharaoh. You know, it's interesting. The animals have always suffered because of man's sin. We see that even in the in the Garden of Eden. Then we see that after the flood. And then we see places like it says in Romans 8, 22, for we know that the whole creation, notice it doesn't just say man, it says we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth together in pain until now. And uh, so we see there that not only has man suffered, the world has suffered and animals have suffered as a result of sin that is in the world. Now, as we stop and think about in Exodus chapter 9, this very great plague that is coming upon the cattle, uh, we've mentioned before that all of these plagues are a blow against the gods of Egypt, the fake gods that they serve. And once again, this plague against the cattle was a great blow against idolatry. You say, what do you mean it was against idolatry? Well, in Egypt, cattle were sacred. And Egyptians worshipped the bull Apis and the calf Menesis. And uh, so they were involved in worshipping these cattle. And as we look at this, we see not only is it a blow to their idolatry, but it also shows us the awesome power of God. It shows that God is over the gods of these Egyptians, that nothing is too hard for him, and that everything is under him, and that he is able to take control of the events that happen in our lives, that he is over all of these fake gods of the Egyptians. And it also shows us the resources of God. Friends, it shows us the simple truth that our God can do anything, that that nothing is too hard for him, that nothing is impossible with him. And we ought to remember that in our lives. How often do we come across difficult situations in life and we get to the place that we think that, that what's happening is too difficult for God. And friends, that is not the case. Let me remind you today, it may be out of your control, but friends, it is never out, out of his control. It may be out of your reach, but friend, it's never out of his reach. Nothing is too difficult for him. Luke 1, 8, 1, says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Ephesians 3, 20 says, Now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And praise God today that we serve an all-powerful God and that he is our father as a child of God. And you've got the wonderful privilege at any time of going into his presence boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Oh, friends, our power is often insufficient. It's always insufficient, but his power is always sufficient. And when we come to the end of our strength, it's, friends, it's a wonderful place because we're at the beginning of his and we have the strength of the all-powerful God that is upon us. May we quickly come to the end of our own strength. May we quickly acknowledge that we need him in our life and that we need his enabling. This also showed us God's judgment upon man's works. You see, these beasts were harnessed by men. These meat beasts were labored by men. And men were using these beasts in order to accomplish the various jobs around the farms in Egypt and things of that nature. And God, by judging the cattle and the horses and all of the other animals that are around, he's reminding men that, that God does not bless the works of men that are done in their own strength, that rather God is bringing judgment upon those works. And friends, if we want to do works that are honored by God and blessed by God, then we need to acknowledge every single day, God, I'm nothing without you, and I need your help, and I need your enabling, and today I need you to give me the strength and the grace and the help that I need to live this day for you and to serve you in a way that honors and pleases you. Friend, let me ask today as we close, are you laboring in your own strength and power, trusting in your own ability, 
Or are you declaring your dependence upon God and going forward in his strength? That's the only way to glorify him. That's the only way to please him. We must learn to lean on Jesus in everything. Have a great day.